Welcome everybody, good afternoon. Um, my name is Max Rekkers and I'm going to tell you about the Emotio player tracking system in combination with um, a couple of different vendors which all integrated into the platform and that is bringing some really nice opportunities and technologies for you guys. So first let's start on uh, where I'm coming from. So I have a little bit of background in, in football as a data analyst and uh, video analyst. Uh, starting in uh, 2007 with football club AZ and up until Manchester United ending in 2016 and currently working for Ajax and the stadium Amsterdam Arena um, uh, working on player tracking technologies and making sure that brilliant technology is spreading into the consumer market um, and, and getting into the world of not only football analysis but also fan engagement. So when I first came to football uh, we thought we were very modern in 2007. When I started AZ, we said we have a data analytics room and that was based on two VCRs that were uh, that they used to play video on the first one and copy uh, to the second to kind of cut their uh, scenes that they want to pre uh, present to the, to the players. I was coming from the field hockey world myself where we were a little bit more advanced in uh, we recorded the game into our laptop with uh, sports code software which is highly familiar here with all the video analysts capturing that software and tagging multiple events uh, allowed us to much more quickly get feedback on the players and find back the scenes that we were looking for starting that project was a very big uh, task working with mr van gaal we all uh, find know that he is very critical and wants to know many 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 different scenes so as a as a young guy i started to build these fantastic what we call them code input windows starting to capture all information that we needed we thought and after the first match i tagged all these different events came back to the dressing room and he says i need that event what happened on the far sideline with that player not doing what i what i asked him to do then I started looking at my coded events and thinking, I don't have a clue which one he means. So we had to go back through the video again and start analyzing it again. I went to my co-trainer and asked him, how can I solve this problem? He said, it's Max, it's very simple. Just add one more button. And that is called the Louis button. Whenever he jumps up from the bench, that is the moment that you want to tag because that definitely is the moment that he wants to see at half time and after the video. So having this great vision on tagging events is fantastic, but in the end, it's about what is the purpose of your analysis needs, both short term and long term. A couple of years later, joining the national team, we started to build out this workflow. So this started out with uh, only analyzing our own matches evolving in hey training is very important too so we should video the training and tag the training going into we need to prepare our opposition also so an opposition meeting extra and this if you have one match a week which AZ at the time did then this is a workflow which is maintainable but now we started to play in Europe and we started to play more games to get more money in with the team that means that the workflow is coming under pressure. So what happens? You start to work more, more guys. So a video guy, one analyst, the second analyst who's going to start on the opposition, and that team grew and grew and grew. At Manchester United, uh, at this moment, more than 25 people are working in the analysis department alone. And this is something that cannot go on forever. We need to to use the automated processes more to more intelligently start to, uh, to gather and use the data. Because time-wise, this workflow is also under pressure. Where we used to have four to five uh, days between the game, it's now, if we're lucky, it's two. And if UEFA and FIFA are involved, they want to get it back to one. So we need to be able to turn around our analysis quicker and, and uh, faster. This is the model that we 
started building on. So we need a very stable network infrastructure. We need to, to move over files between coaches very quickly. Everybody needs to have his hands on video. Everybody needs to get his hands on data. If we're at, um, at the training ground, if we're in the airplane, wherever we are, we need to have, everybody needs to have his video footage synchronized. Then we have lo loads of databases filled with information from scouts, from people visiting from last matches about insights into that opponent. And we want to store those all. We need a video layer where we can have not only one broadcast video of the match, but also more and more different angles coming in. More and more event data is collected. Hey, you know the partners like Opta, uh, Ortec, or uh, Stats that all provide different annotated videos. We all need to have those synchronized to the same video sources. Then today we're going to elaborate a bit more on two-dimensional tracking data. If we want to know where our players are on the pitch and we want to do more advanced calculations on how they move and how they operate together, how can we collect that and again link that to the layers below? Because that is giving us another layer of information. And then annotation, which we all know from television. We want to place a circle around the player. We want to track. Uh, we want to track him while he's in a video. It's all fantastic software. The problem is time. We need a lo loads and loads of time to prepare those videos and to cut those scenes and make them right. 2D plus. So multiple video angles are coming in. Three, four, five, six angles, and the broadcast is starting to share more and more. And in the end, we all know FIFA um, uh, is going into the 3D world where the, the players be, uh, beneath my age, they don't think anymore in 2D flat vid video. They want to uh, experience situations from their high point. And we need to go with that. So about the tracking data. We all know multiple ways of achieving the same. So, GPS is one which is, has been around for ages and will be around for a very long uh, time. I give my player a sensor. That sensor is getting his positional data from a satellite. And after a training, we press print and give the player a report on how many kilometers he ran and how many high distance meters he ran. The second one, optical tracking. Nowadays, we can also do that from video cameras, which are aimed at a specific part of the pitch and by determining the background we can start to track who a player is. An operator is sitting and identifying which player is which. And the third one, RFID tracking. Not been around that long, uh, about 10 years now and uh, that is we give that player a sensor which is communicating to local base stations around the field and gives you a very accurate um, uh, local position, not depending on satellites which are about 50,000 uh, kilometers away from Earth. So, if you want to make a decision, it is very important that you understand what the benefits uh, and disadvantages for every system are. So if we go back to GPS, uh, GPS is fantastic for in a car, yeah, where up to 10 meters accurately it can tell me when to turn and what to do. But every algorithm within GPS is based on linear movement. Yeah. It's based on a car, and the car won't zigzag that easily. It will, it will go in a straight line. But player movement is 360 degrees around, and will go every different turn. So the question is, how accurate will we be able to use that technology? As long as we use it for distance, it's fine. And if it's 10.3 kilometers or 10.5, nobody will really care. But thinking ahead, what we wanted to do was automate more processes, bring stuff together. And there you will see that if you start to overlay, for example, GPS data on video, that will not give you what you are looking for.
and what you will start to see is that GPS will go everywhere and once in a while return to the position where it should be. Optical tracking is the most used for tactical data at the moment. Tactical analysis, I mean. So those three video cameras are aimed all at a different part of the pitch and with help of the operator it can identify who is who. The problem there is obviously the operator. If he makes a mistake and identifies the wrong person, then the wrong person gets added into all the, this data. If we start to make decisions based on data, but we decide on the wrong player, you can only do that once. If that happens to you, no player will ever believe you again. So you have to make sure that your data is accurate. And this both um, uh, has that manual component in there, and secondly, it has a very large post-process in there where uh, they go, go over frame by frame to find out which, uh, if every um, scene is right. The problem with that is it takes up to 24 hours to get back to your video file. In practice, mostly we don't have that time. Straight after the match when we're back into the bus, we want to start analyze start to analyze those scenes to close the game the next morning because you have to move on to your next match. So I think many, many people who work with this technology for a long time start to understand now that RFID is your next answer. But this is a bit more of an infrastructure. You need to place sensors around the field. You need to equip players with a sensor which still is an item which has to be discussed and where some players say, hey, I don't like to wear um, uh, th this tag. And one further for us, we want to bring back that staff from 25 players to a couple of highly skilled uh, ones who can interpret the data. So we don't want to spend our resources on collecting the information, we want to spend our resources on analyzing the information. So this is where the Emotio system is really fantastic. So those sensors around the field, they are mounted once by an installation company and never touch them again. The only thing it needs is pow uh, power and fiber. Um, secondly, automated cameras are linked to the balls and can track the players automatically on uh, the sensor uh, information, so the sensor location. One operator, can easily handle up to six video cameras on his own. What he needs is to instru write instructions from the coach saying which player do you want to track, obviously. And then third, also your heart rate data is being sent with the player position. So you have a lot of extra biometric information. That all comes together in one analysis room which is fantastic, make it close to your pitch and with your coach together you can start to collect information, set alerts for example, uh, set targets for, uh, for players where during the training session you want, don't want them to go over a certain load, you just put in a parameter and it notifies you when that player reaches that point. One further we start to um, collect more information from that player. So in the morning we ask him how do you feel, how did you sleep and we want to marry that information up to the um, uh, to the data that we have from the train. That does it link in how does he feel to what we experience from the objective data and can we find patterns in there. And that works, that load works on this principle. So. Ages back, we put a heart rate monitor around that player and when that heart rate was very high, he got a compliment from the coach saying he did really well. But if I'm not that fit, I will still have a very high heart rate. So the obvious thing that we miss is we need to know what he actually did versus how he feels. And these two indicators together start to tell you something about the efficiency of a player. And if you start to compare that between players with the average of the group, that is a very nice little insight where you can help your players see where they are compared to the team. 
So this is actually um, in the preparation for the World Cup. You will see the center cross is the average of the team and the players are, who are having not so much time in the red zone but on a vertical axis a lot of high intensity distance meters is a very nice way to show every player where he is compared to the group. And that same thing if you want to judge a player over time. What happened to you over time? Are you doing well? Are you progressing? Are you not progressing? This is a player who did very well and this is a player who struggled and got injured after a short while. This is the end result of bringing back information, which is very boring data, to an insight where the group can start to use, utilize it as a tool to become a better player. And to have an understanding in the group what objectively performing better starts to mean. Then this is all about the physical stuff. But to be honest, the physical stuff is nice in football, but it's not athletics. Football is not about who can run the most kilometers. Football is about a smart game, a tactical game. And you need both. You need to be physically able to deliver, definitely one part, but I would call it the lower bar. If you're not fully fit, you shouldn't be participating in the game. Next level is tactically. Now we all maybe uh, hopefully know these parameters from companies like Stats or Prozone. They can provide you heaps of statistics on objectively how a player did. My problem with it is, this is too objective. In the sense of, I'm missing, uh, a very nice example for me always is the number of passes that the player played successfully very nice we had a left back at Bayern Munich and he always had 100% pass completion but the coach was very very dissatisfied with the player why if he was in problem in uh, in trouble he just passed the ball back three meters to his left central defender who then had to solve the problem so passing every ball correctly is not the solution to what you want to measure it's not about having 100% successful passing rate it's about something more intelligent. We need to know that he make the right decision for that time. We can only solve that question if we have more data. So just counting if the ball arrives with the next player is not enough. We need tracking data. We need the position of every player to determine if that is right. So what we build based on the emotio data, if you can press play, please. So this is a view of the emotion system and what you will see is the green light are the options for the player. So the yellow light is when a player has the ball and the green light is which players are an option. And I think you guys start to understand now that if we add this intelligence to, to that passing algorithm, we can start to build data on which player made the right decision. And even you can see here that the ball is moved in 3D and this was unfortunately on the post. But the level of data analysis you can do by combining tracking data with event data is helping you much closer to the language of the coach. So the coach is not talking about 100% pass completion, but he's talking about making the right decisions. And this type of data helps us with that. Having all that data together is nice, but is getting a very hard task to manage. And here we brought in our help uh, from our uh, Microsoft friends, getting all this data into one central location and marrying it up for us. And the trend that you will see in the IT world, which is not a world very much available in soccer, is that with less skills, Microsoft already has all these building blocks ready for you. You don't have to do the hard stuff yourself. You don't have to pre-invest yourself. In the past, we needed to buy a service of 50,000, 100,000 euros before we could start do, doing anything. At this moment, we started out with the team with a budget of 10 euros per month. That was our first database. And from that, we started to grow. 
but we started to grow on that it already was giving us back information that we really needed. And so when I need to go to my board and I need them to tell them how important this is, I'd rather do it on something that already works. And if it works really well, we'll invest a bit more. And that's a much easier way and better way um, uh, to work in from my proposal. And these Microsoft guys are starting to do more and more clever things in when uh, building neural networks, for example, when players get injured, or which are algorithms that can help us further make right decisions. Then where does this end? Does it end here if you press play? <coughs> this is an application that helps us to see from the point of view from the player how he acts in a certain situation. And so with all this tracking data which comes from the Emotio system, we can simulate the eye point of the player and put him back into situations where you want to learn something from his point of view. Fantastic tool. Especially in the youth department, we start to use this more and more. But on a daily basis for a coach, it's not so easy to talk on this level. What we would want, ideally, is that we can use video and overlay our data automatically. If you can press play again. So this was, is, is one of the tools uh, which is around in the, the broadcast and football world, where as an operator you start to tag every player and every graphics that you want to um, uh, kind of visualize. This clip of 25 seconds takes about 30 minutes to prepare. We prepare this clip for the group to watch and then two minutes before the coach comes in and says, hey, this visualization, I want to change it a little bit because it fits a bit better to my story. And you're not able to, re to react. Why not? It's all done in advance. Making changes is an awful process. So what we try to do is a next version on that. The process which makes it hard here is that we have to learn the tool to recognize the field. And that takes a lot of time over and over again. If we would have the whole field always in our sight, that would be much better. So multiple cameras, and sorry to switch to the small screen, but um, Edward sitting over there has an iPad application which he uses. This is the game on uh, technology that I'm showing you now, uh, which is based on a couple of static video cameras, which always have the full field. If you zoom out, Edward. So this is multiple cameras glued together. So the camera doesn't move. So we can digitally zoom in. So Edward is doing every bit of this in real time. We always have the full field and you can swipe from left to right as often as you want. Which is normal, many systems have that. The next step is bringing back automatic camera movement. So based on where the ball is in this case, it's loaded to the system and your virtual camera goes as a normal camera. But if you pause now, Edward, and you move the camera and you want to see the position of your goalie, you can still do that. So he can still go everywhere he wants. Next level is, yeah, a coach would like to draw on this. That would be amazing. So we want to point out that this player is on the wrong position. OK, fantastic. And is he able to clear that really quickly? Yeah, he is. Next level, we want to draw arrows, but in relation to the football pitch. So they need to be, if you go through a player that gives you a nice example, so this uh, line is aligned to the pitch itself. Or if you drag a circle where we want to show the space, you can show the space. Everything is done in real time, no preparation needed, 
So the coach is getting into a process where he doesn't need to prepare anymore, but he can do it on the job, even in real time. So during the match, he can start to prepare his clips. One level further is bring that tracking data in. We have that fantastic precise tracking system, so we know the position of every player. So, Edward now ticked a couple of the players and you can see that the data is following automatically. If we can start to do that, what's the, the purpose of that? It's not about the circle, but obviously it's about the lines. So, he taps the multiple people and automatically the distance is calculated between those people. Between those players, sorry. Why is the distance uh, so important to us? Our tactical models tell us what the maximum distance between players should be in different situations. So what we try to teach the players is what that distance means. And you can get only get them that feeling if they can experience and uh, visualize it themselves. So having all these tools was fantastic, but then we came back to our 65-year-old coach at Ajax, Henny, uh, Henny Spijkerman, and he said, Max, I only want to do one thing. It would be really brilliant if I can just pick up this player and put him in the position where he needs to be. And also that feature is available. As you can see, Edward is moving now different players to a new position. And what we start to experience is a very different level of coaching feedback to players. The 2017 level of feedback, where the coach is in charge, not the analyst, not all the smart uh, tech people around it, brought back to a very simple technology on an iPad, which everybody can use. Well, on coaching level, this is awesome. But now, let us even think one further. How cool would it be if we can have people in their living rooms have that same experience? So we now have that high quality video and we know the position of every player. Why couldn't we bring every player into, or every television into a mode where it can say, okay, just give me more interaction <coughs> and for example, have the animation there, the tactical animation on how the play goes. Go into 3D and have somebody at home understand more about all the tactics that we now have available on analysis level. And obviously we have all this data so we can share it. Everybody can see how, man, how, much, how many meters a player ran. But now I can decide for myself, not when the broadcaster decides. And maybe I want to share with a group of my friends, which are at their homes. And we can start to prepare clips and share between each other what we find of certain situations. It can be very funny, can be very tactical. Or have it as a second screen application, maybe in stadium, maybe at home. I want to see I'm sitting uh, at FC Barcelona and I'm sitting 25 meters from the sideline. I want to see what happened on the other side. We now have the technology there to push this video in real time to want as many spectators as we want. With the, with the different technologies of Microsoft and TNO, we now have the capability to multicast to a group as big as we want. All this is being made ready in the Netherlands now, and we're going to show you guys that we can do so much more in the level of football from a technology point of view. But this even goes further. We still have that expensive tracking system which can, we can bring to a broader use. For example, a very easy one, I don't know if you have any idea how many mowing guys, how many uh, guys on the pitch there are during and after a match. We now have our first automated mower which based on the tracking technology, the same one that the players wear, 
is now equipped on the mowing machine and it's automatically going over the field whenever it's instructed to by the software. The Amsterdam Arena is a, a stadium where we also uh, have a lot of different events. So one of the big problems for them was um, Sensation is maybe um, an event that you heard about. Sensation, we have about 60,000 people in the center, uh, in the grass of the stadium. And we have all these first eight people walking around, but no clue what really happens. So what we did now is during those events, those first eight, first eight people, they wear the vest like the players wear. And that helps them I at the central uh, location, there's a much more higher equipped uh, first aid, aid guy who can now automatically zoom in and be tracked with that same data. And he can decide and look from a distance and give medical advice and can see the situation and knows what to do in advance before the guy comes back. Same with the police. And the last one, which I uh, love the one in collaboration with Philips. Philips has those very high quality light bulbs and they can, be, they can move incredibly fast. Do, uh, those are now linked to the tracking system also. So not only we can track them and send the video camera to it, but also in a case of emergency, we can send lights. From a commercial point of view, we can now automatically start to track objects. So for example, we have flying balloons going through the arena uh, and then really fast flying objects which we can now automatically track by the lightning system. The fan engage the number of fan engagements we can do are incredible. And it only starts by one very simple, very simple technology which is called the emotion system. Thank you. That was what I wanted to share with you today.